In this video, we're going to look at how a creep test can be conducted, and we're going to compare that with the ultimate tensile strength test that we've already seen. Now, the first thing to note is that in a UTS test, one end of the test piece is fixed, and to the other end, we apply a gradually increasing load. So the force is going to increase throughout the test, and as the force increases, the stress increases. We continue increasing the stress up to the point where the piece of the material ruptures and fails. So the type of loading there is gradual loading. The size of the load is gradually increased. Now a creep test is slightly different. Once again, one end of the material is fixed. This time let's assume the top surface of the material is fixed. And to the other end we apply a force, but this time the force is applied in terms of a constant weight. So we have a constant weight applied. Recall that weight is a force. But the important thing here, because of the way the machine's configured, what we have this time is constant loading. So throughout the duration of the test, there's no change to the size of force that's being applied to the material. The other thing that's worth mentioning is often during a creep test, the piece of material is going to be held at a constant temperature. And what we're trying to do here is replicate the service conditions. So if in a given application, a piece of material is going to be subjected to a weight or a force, and it's going to be held at a temperature T during its service life, then ideally we want to replicate those conditions in the test. We want to ensure the same force or more specifically, the same stress is being applied to the piece of material or a sample of the material. And we also want to make sure that the temperature is being maintained at the service temperature. So from what we've already learned, we know that when we apply a force F to that test piece, it's going to undergo an instantaneous strain. So at time zero, we're going to have an instantaneous strain, which we call epsilon zero original strain or initial strain. Now if creep didn't occur in this piece of material, then the strain would remain the same. Recall that strain is change in length over original length. We see that over on the left hand side. So what we're really saying there is that the change of length of the test piece would remain constant. But because of the phenomenon of creep, that isn't actually the case. And what we see over time, again referring to our diagram in the bottom right hand corner, is that that piece of material is going to begin to creep or it's going to begin to stretch. So its change in length isn't going to remain fixed. So over time we're going to get a change in strain or a change in length with respect to time. And we'll talk a little bit more about this relationship in the next video. The important points to note is that the type of loading is different from a UTS test. Instead of gradual loading, as in the case of a UTS test, we have a constant or fixed force being applied to the test piece. And we're also regulating the temperature of the test piece to replicate its service conditions. We're allowing that load to be applied for a prolonged period. And what we will observe as a result is that the test piece is going to stretch and eventually fail, even though we're not increasing the size of the force. Now the final thing that's important to note is that the diagram we see in the bottom corner will be entirely dependent on the size of the stress that's being applied and the temperature of the test piece. So each of these diagrams for creep would be specific to these conditions of stress and temperature.